I've been going racing for a number of different years now, and a number of different years. He does from. I've been going racing for a number of years now, and one thing that's always struck me is the whole range of people I see here, from lords and ladies to the guy who does the gardening. More and more families are making racing a day out because it is normally free for children and it's not unusual to see face painters and children's entertainers as well as the regular bookmakers and jockeys. Very few sports enjoy such a wide audience, but then again, very few sports are anything like horse racing. What makes a day here so unique is that the horse racing itself, whilst it's the main reason you're here, it's not the only reason you're here. There is a heck of a lot more to do at the races than just the races themselves. It's about the socialising, the time spent picking a horse, the gambling, the thrill of watching a horse you've backed run and hopefully even win, followed by the collection of the winnings or the post-mortem if you've lost. Okay, so you've decided you want to make a day of it. Now you've got to decide what type of race you want to see. Within racing, there is a certain amount of rivalry between the two distinct codes, jump racing, or to give its proper name, national hunt, and flat racing. Each code has its own flavors, their own stars, and their own tastes. Jump racing is exactly what it says on the tin. The horses need to jump over things. And flat racing, well, they don't jump over things because the tracks are flat. Each code has its own occasions, different fans and occurs at different times of year. Rule of thumb, if your toes are numb, then you're at the jumps, but if they're not, then you're at the flats. So, well, let's look at jump racing first. Whilst races are held all year round, the main season runs from October through to April. So as soon as those clocks change, it's pretty much time for jump racing to start. You can split the jumps into two categories, hurdle races and steeplechases. Then there's flat racing. If horse racing were a pair of siblings, then flat racing would be the sun-tanned, slender-toned, Porsche-driving showbiz brother. The prize money is higher, and it's all about the glamour. So guys, this is where to go for your eye candy. Okay, a day at the races is about a hell of a lot more than just the races themselves. Everyone is watching everyone, and those horses on the parade ring, well, they're not <laughs> just the only ones being eyed up. I've been joined today by the glorious Victoria, and she's gonna tell us a little bit about her outfit that she's put on today. So, tell us about it. Um, well, I opted for practical shoes rather than heels, lots of grass, and don't wanna get mud on the shoes, you know. Uh, shoes are an important thing for a girl. Practical option, I've gone for tights, it's a little bit colder today. Um, a little bit of a girly dress, um, cardigan, a bit windy. Didn't go for a hat today because I thought I might lose it in the wind, so I thought, you know, better keep it and fancy running along the track trying to find it. So that's pretty much it. Um, do, you, do you bring change of shoes for uh, as the weather changes at all? Like maybe some flip flops in your bag or? A... Yeah, every girl who you know knows her shoes should maybe be able to bring a spare pair to make sure she's fully prepared for every weather eventuality. It's Britain, four seasons in one day, I think. So it's good to make sure we're always prepared. That's it, the best of summer. We've not had the best of weather today, <laughs> exactly. have we? And you mentioned earlier about layers as well. That's obviously important. Yes, uh, layers, cardigan. You can all take them off and the sun comes out, put it back on again. So again, it's all about being practical. Okay, so there you have it. That's Victoria's secret on fashion for the races. <laughs> the most important accessory any serious race goer needs is a pair of binoculars. Whilst you can see close-ups of what's happening on the big screens, by wearing binoculars, you are letting all other race goers know that you're an expert in all things equine. If you spot someone else wearing binoculars, then follow them. They tend to know what they're doing, so get up close and listen in for some advice, which will usually steer you towards a winner. Now, there is a risk that you'll get nicked for stalking, so the key is to do it stealthily and not get noticed. Okay, so you've picked your race, you've picked your outfit. Now let's see what you do when you get here. One thing that separates horse racing from most other sports is that there is the regular routine of moving around. It starts with a visit here to the parade ring to watch the horses. You then head over to either the betting ring or tote to scan the prices and place a bet, then back to the stands or grass to watch the race, then off to the winner's enclosure to cheer in the winner and watch the presentation, then maybe to the bar to celebrate or commiserate and gather your thoughts for the next race. Then you start the whole routine again. Of course, if you prefer, you can just take a seat on the grass. But I would much rather be at the bar. Okay, I'm over at the parade ring. 10 minutes before each race starts, the crowd get the chance to get up right up close to the horses. 
and it's here that you can look for some of the signals that would suggest that a horse is in form. Why don't you check out our betting guide for what to look for in a winning horse? So, well now you know what to look for, it's time to put your money where your mouth is. Whilst racing isn't just about betting, for many it's the main reason people come to the track. So whether you're betting £2 or £2,000, there are bookmakers here who will happily take your wager. They all display the odds on offer, but their prices will always vary, so it's best to find a bookmaker which offers the best return on the horses you want to back. You may even see bookmakers waving their arms around. Don't worry, they're not fans of the village people doing the YMCA, they're communicating to each other. Whilst bookies will be taking bets off punters like you and me, they'll also be betting with each other to cover their potential losses. Alternatively, why not place a bet at one of the tote windows? If you're a bit unsure of how betting works, these kind ladies who work for the tote will always give you a hand if there's something you don't understand. Okay, so in the next chapter I'm going to tell you a bit more about how to put a bet on. But for now, why don't we go out there and watch a race starting? Before the race can actually get underway, the horses need to be loaded into the stalls. Often there's always one or two that gets a bit mardy and despite the jockey's best efforts, there's always one or two that just won't do what they're told. That's when these guys come into play, the stall handlers. Remember when you were at school there were always kids who rode their bikes across streams and jumped out of trees? Or well, some of those kids grew up to be stall handlers. This fearless band of brothers have a job which involves pushing the horses into the stalls using various encouragement techniques, namely brute force and a little rope with a handle. These starting stalls are only used in flat racing. This was a jumps meeting, the horses would just be lining up on the track before lifting a string of tape out of their way. This big red lollipop above my head is the winning post. If your horse crosses the finishing line before everyone else's, you're on to a winner! So go and collect your money, my son! OK, so you've picked your spot in the grandstand, watched the race, now what? Well, the circle is finally completed by making your way over to the winner's enclosure to watch the presentation to the winning owner. If you're in the fortuitous position of riding the winning horse, then you'll get the pleasure of taking the horse into the winner's enclosure. Here, you'll get a hearty pat on the back from the owner, a share of the winnings, and a pleasure of a triumphant round of applause. Meanwhile, those jockeys that rode the also ran start getting to work on their post-race verdicts to the owner. So expect to hear excuses such as... Oh, I'm really sorry, you know, the, the race was two miles and I thought it was six furlongs. Oh, sorry, I got stuck in the inside and I asked all the jockeys around me to move and they wouldn't move. Yeah, the draw was really wide and by the time I took back and I gave him about 25 lengths start and I couldn't catch him up. Now he's way too slow, he's useless. Right, well that's it, all the races are over for the day. So it's time to hit the bar, either to commiserate or to celebrate your winnings. I know where I'm going. Best of luck now.